How you doing guys and girls? Welcome to the latest episode of the Be More podcast. Okay guys, so I've not been here for a while for a solo show, but today guys, I'm excited after some amazing guest um, shows with some different people coming on, sharing their stories, full of inspiration. And guys, the, all of the details in the story, how you can change your life, it's all in the story. And normally it comes from the pain, right? Um, and today, guys, today's show is all about your habits. Okay, habits is a big thing for me that I've actually done a few podcasts on before. Uh, but if you're new to the show and you haven't heard me talk about it before, hopefully you get some value from this because, guys, habits has been the thing that changed, has changed my life. And the, the truth is, guys, you will only change your life when you change something that you do daily. Okay, guys, so everyone has so many habits in their life. We are literally humans that operate on by habit. Um, it's the way that the body and the brain works at its most optimal way. And a lot of our habits, we're not consciously aware of, right? We do them, we are literally, it's called Hypnotic Rhythm, a really good book that I've read before. It's called Outwit in the Devil by Napoleon Hill. And he talks about hypnotic rhythm and how we're all in this hypnotic rhythm and living our life through these, these daily habits. Um, and for me, guys, I was drifting and going through these habits for a long, long time. Um, and I had no idea, by the way. I had no idea. It wasn't like it was something that I was consciously aware of. And I'm going to talk about the four stages of competence on this um, podcast today, guys, because when you can become tapped in and aware and you can actually become consciously aware and change your habits yourself, um, things can really start to change. That's what, that's what happened for me, guys. Okay, so I'm going to talk through my story um, and the four stages of competence for me and how I became more aware and became more able to to really control the future of my, and my, my results by creating and, and improving my own daily habits, right? Which is, we're all, none of us rise to the level, level of our goals, guys. We always fall to the level of our systems. The question is, how tapped in are you to your own system, like your own daily system, your own daily rituals? And it all comes down, this is something that I learned from my, one of my mentors is, you have to create clarity on the vision that you want for your life. Like create a crystal clear vision for where you want your life to go, the results you want to you want to attract and manifest into your life, what the cars you want to drive, what the house you want to live, the business that you want to build, the income that you want to have, the the residual income that you want, all of the things, right? The family, the all the stuff, the holidays, whatever, right? How do you want your life to look? You need crystal clear clarity on that vision, right? And once you've got that vision, then you then you can create a ladder down that all comes all the way down to what's the next steps for me, okay? What are the daily standards that I need to show up with to create those results, right? Let's say, for example, you've got goals around your health, amazing. Let's say you wanna have a six pack or you wanna be 10% body fat or there's a marathon you wanna run at a certain pace, great, there's the goal, there's the vision. But then break it down. What does my training and program need to look like? What do my standards need to be like every single day to show up as someone who can create those types of results? Okay, this is what it comes down to. Everyone has the goals. Well, most people should have, right? But the question is, do you have a standard that you show up to daily? And this is where your habits come into play because you can create your habits and your habits can will then create your future. Okay, guys, so let me ask you guys, like, what are your habits for your health? What are your habits for your nutrition? What are your habits for your exercise? What are your habits for your daily step count? Like, these are things that I became, which is my first real introduction to habits was in the gym, okay? Because it was something that I was passionate about, something that I really was enjoying doing. Um, so when I was 15, I started going to the gym and I loved it, right? And I, did, I was at first, by the way, there's four stages of competence. Let me go into this first. The first stage, which is, is unconscious incompetence, okay? So you're not aware and you're not competent, right? So you're not doing the things that you wanna do. This is where most people spend the most of time of their life, right? They, they literally will just drift from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed, they will just be continuously serving other people's goals. They'll go to the job, they'll go do the nine days out, not nine hours of work, working for the boss, doing what they're told. They'll then go home, the missus will do as they tell them to do, the kids will run them ragged and then they get to bed, right? They didn't achieve anything for themselves in that day, they were just serving other people, right? Which is fine, which is sometimes we have to do those things. But there's also a time of the day where you can where you can make sure that you're doing things for you to move yourself forward for your goals because that's really important as a let's say you're a dad as a leader as someone who shows up you need to be setting the example right um, so that's stage one in conscious unconscious incompetence right which is a stage to get out of as soon as you can right next is conscious incompetence so you create some awareness around your incompetence you create some awareness and go hmm. 
this, this is how I'm living my life right now, okay? So for example, we sit down with people every single day and we ask them about their nutrition habits, right? What do you eat a day? How are you feeling? Ask them the questions, right? What are you spending? Is it getting you the results that you want? And most people, when they have this kind of um, evaluation, this kind of question, they go, they become a con they become conscious of their incompetence. They go, okay, I'm eating this, then I'm eating this, and then I'm buying this meal deal, and then I'm buying this, I'm spending probably 15 pound a day, I'm not getting the results that I want, and then they go, shit, that's like a lot of money, right? And I'm not getting the results that I want. Maybe I need to change things, right? Because for things to change, I need to change, right? So this is a key area to get dissatisfaction in that incompetence by becoming aware of it, okay? Which for me, has happened at several different times in my life, right? In the gym setting, I became aware of the fact that I didn't really know what I was doing. I was, I was aware that I was incompetent, right? But that wasn't a problem for me. Some people see that as a problem, so they don't even, they don't even go to the gym. because like, oh, I don't wanna look stupid in front of anyone else. Look, no one cares. No one cares, right? They're too busy worrying about what they're doing. They're too busy about their own problems in their life. They're too busy about their own objectives to, what, to worry about the fact that you don't know what you're doing when you got on a, on a chess machine. Yeah, they, they don't give a shit, right? That's in your own head and you've got to let that go to move forward, right? So becoming a conscious incompetent is great. Then you can become someone who's consciously competent through learning the skills and through becoming someone who's intentional about how you're gonna show up, okay? So I remember when I first started my business with Herbalife, guys, I was working with my mentor and he was like, right, let's start talking to people. And I was like, really? Like, I, I'd never done that really before, right? In a case of where I was trying to market a product or where I was trying to help people to see value in something and I was trying to get into sales and recruitment, I'd never done that before, right? So that was really foreign to me. So at first I had to really discipline myself to go and do the activity, right? I remember I built a whole personal training business without talking to anybody really. They would talk to me. I would just create content, um, show up as someone who was in shape and people would come to me and they would ask for sessions, right? And I would market myself quite well, but then as a result, I only created a very small business, right? It wasn't that big. Um, whereas when I started to reach out to people and actually talk to people about how I could help them solve their problems with their nutrition, with their health, with a, with a financial opportunity, with a chance to make some side money, with a chance to change their financial situation, it starts to grow like crazy just from talking to people. And this was something that my mentor taught me. He's like, just talk to people and invite people. At the beginning, guys, I had to consciously tell myself to do this every day. And I remember I set up habits where I was like, I'm gonna to talk to 10 people a day, right? And I was like, if I can just do that and be consistent, that's gonna be over a month, 300 odd people. I'm gonna find people that are gonna to wanna to do this with me, right? I was prepared for the no, I was prepared for the rejection, I was prepared for objections, I was prepared for anything really. I just knew that if I just kept doing the 10 a day, I'd get some success and the success was gonna create new learnings for me and the mistakes would create learnings and I would get better through time, right? Um, so it's a consciously becoming competent, okay? By doing that over and over and over and over and over and over again, you become what's called unconsciously competent. You just do it in your sleep. You do it um, hypnotically, but, but, and, but it becomes a successful habit, a good habit for you that serves you in your future versus something that is you're doing unconsciously, but it's incompetent. It's not a good thing for you, right? Um, hopefully this is making sense, right? But I remember that there was a stage where I did this with, with prospecting, um, that at first it was difficult for me. I remember being uncomfortable. I remember it being like, this is a weird thing to do. This is foreign to me. And then all of a sudden it became something that I would do. And almost if I didn't do it, it would feel weird for me. Right, I'd be like, oh, I've not done the thing that, and for me it's become a purpose now because I've helped people with what we do by reaching out to them and talking to them and change their lives. Like no joke, change people's lives to the point where I've had people who are suicidal, who now live the most purpose-driven life, are healthy, and are impacting hundreds of people in their community. That makes me, that's like, that for me is a drug. That for me is something that I love to do because it's, it's me helping someone, right? So every day I'm like, let me go and pour into other people and help them with this opportunity, help them with these products, help them with what I'm passionate about, right? So I've become unconsciously competent at that because it's something that I love to do and it's become a habit, right? It's become a passion. It's become something that I just do daily and a standard in my life because I'm like, I know my vision, I know where I wanna go, I know the results that I wanna create, I know that's gonna create, that's gonna demand of me a strong standard of how I show up in my life with talking to lots of people, inviting lots of people, and showing them what we do in Herbalife and how that can help them, right? These are my habits, these are the things that I've put in place, my work habits around prospecting, around my leadership, like these are all things that I've become intentional around, okay? 
intention is massive. Most people don't have any intention in their life and they wake up and they wonder why they don't have any purpose, right? So you've got to wake up and make a decision. It comes from making a real strong decision in your life to go, this is how I want to live. These are the results that I want to create and this is what I'm going to go and do about it, okay? So all habits, by the way, guys, are hard to start. Okay, they're always hard to start. It's different, it's foreign, it's doing something different. Doing something new for us, we're creatures of habit, we're creatures literally. So, doing something different creates, makes us feel uncomfortable. But trust me, the results that you want are always on the other side of that comfort zone. So, push through, go and do the thing, go and become clear on the vision that you have. Break that down to what that requires of you and start showing up as that person. Start being that person with those set of standards in your life and start becoming someone who consciously becomes competent at it. And through time, you, you, you only, you've got to earn it. You've got to earn your way to an unconscious competent through time, through showing up, through discipline, through sacrifice, through someone who does more than they get, that is willing to do more than they get paid for and do it over and over and over again. But through time, if you're in the right vehicle, you will then become paid way more than what you do, right? Because that's the beauty of, of building a business that offers leverage like network marketing. Okay, guys. So that this is like something that's really, really key. And I'm, I'm going to keep this short because I know I've given you guys a lot of information there, but Make sure you guys have uh, an intention around your habits when it comes to your goals, okay? Show me your goals, great, but show me your system. Show me your daily system, your daily standards for how you're gonna move the needle from where you are to where you wanna be. That's the key, that's the needle mover. That's how you get to your goals, because like we said before, you're never gonna rise to that goal, you're gonna fall to the level of your systems, right? The system is the key. Show me your system, show me how you operate, and then we'll show you your results that you're gonna create. And you can create this around, for me, it's key. I've got health habits, I've got work habits, I've got personal development habits, I've got relationship habits, like some little things like when we have our dinner, we don't have the TV on, we don't, we don't have our phones with us, we sit and be present together, me and Robin. We go for a walk at multiple times a week, maybe three, four times a week, sometimes every day we go for a walk and we'll check in with each other, we'll ask each other questions about work, about life, about whatever it might be, whatever we're going through right at that moment, we talk, we talk it out, right? And these are really strong relationship habits that have changed the game for me and Robin versus before, we would be unconscious in this area, incompetent in this area, and we would just sit and watch TV and wonder why we would struggle with a connection because we were never talking to each other, we were just watching the shit on the telly, right? So sometimes turn the shit off. Um, and by the way, sometimes in your life, you don't need to add more stuff to create the results that you want. That It's more a case of subtracting things from your life. It's taking things away that are not serving you, that are distractions. Um, and this only can happen, by the way, you only can become aware of what to remove when you become aware of what you want, right? This is the key, you need to decide what you want, create some real clarity on that, what that looks like, create that beautiful image in your mind of that future, then it's a case of, right, that's when the why is strong, the how becomes so easy. When the why is clear, like you can see what your future is and it's so, it's so appealing to you, the daily sacrifice of how to do it becomes so easy for you. It doesn't become a challenge, whereas if you're someone who's who's finding it hard to take action, you don't have a big enough why. You don't have a strong enough um, clarity on your vision for what you want to create. Therefore, you get stuck in the mechanics of, oh, what I've got to do today, it's so uncomfortable. It's not, right? If, you're big, if your reasons are big enough, there is nothing that can make you uncomfortable, um, make you not take action on that goal. For me, I know I need to take action on my goal. And if I don't, I, I don't go to bed feeling good. Right, this is something that's happened for me is I've created such a connection with my goals, with my vision, and I, I don't want to get to my deathbed at, let's say, hopefully at 200 years old, right? I don't want to get there and be, have any regrets for the things that I didn't do, right? That, that for me is really connecting to that feeling when I'm on my deathbed and my, my family are around me and they're looking at me, I want them to be so proud that I did everything that I could to go and do the things that I want in, in this short time in my life because life is so short, right? And we, most people are living it like they're gonna live forever, right? Whereas we're not. Um, so therefore, who cares what someone thinks? You're gonna get, you're gonna find that moment comes real soon. You're gonna be on that deathbed in your last moments and you're gonna think to yourself, why did I give a shit what Dave from the pub would think about what I'm gonna go and do? Um, and, and, and some people are paralyzed by that and they, they, they live a miserable life because they're worried about what someone might think if they go and do something different to what that person and what that person's standards are. Who cares what their standards are? You don't want their life. If you don't want to trade lives with them, don't worry about what they think, right? So guys, habits, hard to start, 
but they're worth it. They are so worth it and they are key for your long-term success. So start really becoming aware and developing your system for success, your system to move forward and achieve your goals. It all starts with that vision. Then you need to create your standards. Then you need to see it through and you need to be disciplined and you need to show up for yourself and do it over and over and over again when no one is watching, when you don't feel like doing it, that's the time to show up. That's the time to win. That's the time for you to take ownership of those daily activities and through time guys you're going to start to achieve incredible results and everyone's going to be asking what you're doing right everyone's going to, and you're then going to have the ability to help them too you can heal yourself from your journey help you and then help other people do the same because guys we're living in a world right now where people need help people need guidance people need leadership people need someone who can grab a hold of them and show them a better way and we, we guys can do that through becoming getting clarity on what we want and then showing up as someone who is disciplined in doing the daily disciplines that are needed the non-negotiables like to call it to move forward okay guys so hopefully that's added some value for you guys around habits Show me your habits and I'll show you your future, okay guys? So get clear on it, get a pen out, take a, a sheet of paper and really start to get real clear on this. Write it down, the power of the pen is so 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 valuable. Um, and let me know how you find this activity, guys, because I'm doing these podcasts, hopefully to add some value to you guys and let us know what you think. This is gonna be streamed into, onto YouTube as well if you prefer to watch, uh, but also go onto my podcast. I really would appreciate any sort of feedback um, on the show, whether it be leaving us a five star or dropping a comment in the, in the YouTube or whatever it might be. Uh, but as always, I really appreciate you guys and thanks as always for listening. We'll be back soon with the next episode of the show.